Hello and welcome back to my Java 1.8 tutorial series where I'm teaching you all the new um, features and changes in Java 1.8. Last episode we went over the interfaces and a lot of changes that the um, Java has made, the, all the modifications that Java has made to interfaces and all the stuff you're allowed to do with them now. And this leads us right into our next tutorial part which is lambda expressions. Lambda is a uh, a Greek letter uh, commonly symbolized by lowercase lambda which looks like an upside down Y but that is besides the point because what it does is allow us new um, ways to create different uh, interfaces so instead of using a main object for our interface we're gonna have our first example of a uh, lambda expression so we're just gonna call this I return I read and you know this is the interface not the class we use the same exact thing that we used last time and it is a functional interface so if we just do in if we just um, add up our constructor like we would a class and then at the end of the equal sign this will be the lambda expression now the lambda expression all it does is you can only use them with functional interfaces or interfaces that only have one abstract method um, and what it does is that in parentheses or wherever you would just specify the inputs. Now this can either be a comma separated list of inputs, or it could be a still a comma separated list of inputs without specifying the type. So it will infer the type based on you know the abstract method in the interface. Or you know since ours only has one input, we can just say x, and the next character will be a uh, hyphen greater than symbol okay so that's just um the if you mess with other programming languages you might be familiar with this but it's something different cuz in languages to C++ that's how you would call methods on pointers but in here it's a lambda expression and it's basically specifying the method so x is our input just like in our um, abstract method and then in here um, the brackets are optional but in here we put the actual body of our method so instead of like creating a whole new class with our own method we can just instantly specify the method right in our constructor so let's say x return x times x so now if we can send change this to iret which is our object we can save this so this should return 25 so we just compile main.java oh. Oh. we don't need the return since we are in, we don't have any brackets so we don't need the return silly me I like to I don't like making things as concise as they can be I prefer to uh, write things out Oh, silly me, in I return, I forgot to make this abstract method abstract. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Fun times over here in tutorials. So this time, yeah, so it worked perfectly, I hope. So if we just run main, say hello Java 8, and it'll say 25, because we use a lambda expression to do the method so whenever we call this it should return the input times itself for the input squared and 5 times 5 is 25 now if you didn't notice you might have noticed a slight pause when it was running it wrote Java 8 and it was just the slight pause you know less than a second pause because computers are fast but um, lambda expressions in Java they are um, not the most efficient way to go about things unfortunately they are not bad. I mean, it's performance-wise, it would be better to you know make your own class that implements it with its own method. But given the convenience of these lambda expressions, it's certainly a lot better. It might be a bit faster if we made it um, less, if we made it more explicit. Like I prefer to do things, and like Java was made to be. So if we do it like this. Now it looks a bit more like a method. We're specifying the type of the variable, and we actually have a method body. So if we compile it, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to compile it. Pretty close, though. There. Ugh, 
port key. Oh, because I had to put a semicolon. Silly me, forgetting semicolons. But yeah, we can compile this, and then if we run it, if we're lucky, it'll just be a bit faster. Okay. Maybe just a tiny bit faster, but as you can see, there are as um, convenient as these lambda expressions can be, they um, just have the slightest bit of a downside. Now, there's more things um, to do with these lambda expressions. For example, uh, you might be familiar with the uh, runnable interface, which is um, you could it's basically so you can make threads, but with um, an interface instead of extending the thread class. So we can say runnable. Uh, thread doesn't and we can make this equal a lambda expression so thread the um, runnable is a functional method now it only has one abstract method and that is run and that is a void method with no inputs so what we can do we can just say empty inputs arrow method body so we'll say system.out.println in a thread or I'm on a thread so now in addition to printing that out we can just say uh, new thread thread dot start because whenever you have a runnable you would put it as the arguments to the uh, thing that's just how you know making a thread from an interface works so we can compile it and then we can run it, say hello, and it said, I'm on a thread, just like it did, except it did it on a different thread, which is nice. So, for example, if we wanted to be resource intensive and not very smart with our programming, we can say i is less than 20. It'll start 20 new threads. Now, if we run it, it should say that a lot. Yes. And I'm not going to count that, but let's just assume that it said it 20 times. So that's another use of lambda expressions. A lot easier to make your own threads. In fact, hmm, not yeah. So that's another thing. Now, the Java, um, in all their you know infinite wisdom, have created a, another um, library another package, I mean to say, another package, and it's java.util.function. So we can import java.util.function. Everything in it. Now this adds, sev basically what it adds are several interfaces that are meant to be used with lambda expressions. So what we can say is function. That's one of their um, interfaces, and it is uses generic types so and it takes um it has two generic types it takes t as an input so let's just say double as an input and it returns something as an output so let's just do uh, integer it returns an integer we we'll just call this func and we're gonna say this equals a lambda expression it's gonna take a double as an input double d and the function it's gonna have which is basically, you know, the function. It has several of these. There's predicates, consumer suppliers, binary operators, several different sub instances of those interfaces. But the function just it, um, input is your first type, and output is your second type. So we're just going to say return math dot floor, and we're going to floor d should return an integer. We should, we should be able to do that. Take away this nuisance right here. And just so we should be able to do, uh, oh, function. So in order to use this function, the method that it has internally is apply. That is its only um, uh, abstract method. So we just apply, and we'll just say uh, math.py. So if we just compile this, or 
or that could happen. <laughs> Bad return type and lambda expression. Hmm. That may be it. Take the TR. Would you prefer this? <laughs> I doubt it. it. May just work. You never know. Oh, was I incorrect in assuming a? Uh, math.floor would return an integer because I would not be surprised at that whatsoever. But yeah, the first problem was the um, function generic types. Generic types are pretty, pretty picky. Type casting for the win. Generic types are picky in that, you know, um, generic types only work with objects and they don't work with primitive types. So when you specify one of these things to be an object, then you have to make sure the input is also specified as the object and not the primitive type and math library yeah that's fun that's one of the fun things about uh, working without an IDE is that sometimes you just forget some basic libraries return but uh, I digress so if we just run this should return first the 25 and then 3 because once we rounded pi with um, our, we declared a function, which the function is just math.round, blah, blah, blah. We just applied it to math.py, and if you floor 3.1419, blah, 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 I mean, if you round it, it rounds down, and it goes to 3. Another applicable thing is, let's say you were doing maths. So let's change, so if we just change this to double, we can just return a... Uh, x times, yeah, let's change this to x. So we do x times x plus 4 times x plus 4. That is a quadratic equation. Simple quadratic equation. We could factor it, but that'd be too easy. So if instead we applied a number such as 4, if we compiled it now, And cannot be converted. Really? That's. should be able to. But that's just my opinion. Let me guess. Double cannot be cast to double. I would not be surprised. Okay, it worked. Yeah, it's a bit persnickety with that. So now if you run it, it actually ran 36. I'm sure if you plug 4 into this equation, 4 squared is 16 plus. 4 times 4, which is 16, which is 32, plus 4 is 36. So the uh, that function of 4 is in fact 36. So it's a nice way if you need to keep your um, keep a simple function. It's certainly useful. Again, this is just um, one of the many things they added with the java.util.function API. There's also um, Boolean operators and binary operators and a whole bunch of other stuff that I'm sure is certainly useful so this is just extremely useful lambda expressions um, again they're very useful they're very um very nice way to make things more concise than writing out your own class and implementing it or making inner classes or anonymous classes which are a pain and look terrible coding but this is a lot um, shorter more versatile way to write them and the only downside is that it may just um, isn't the best. I mean, um, it's better than previous, but again, you saw the performance lag just a tiny bit because what it does, what the compiler does, is that it doesn't put the lambda expression into the um, Java bytecode, which is what it converts it to when it makes a class out of your um, Java file. It converts it to Java bytecode. It doesn't like put a lambda expression in the bytecode. It actually converts all of this into um, whatever it is, like a new class or an inner class. So it's, um, it's just, um, easy for the programmer, not the same level of easy for the program. So you give a little, you take a little. That, again, was one of the biggest features of, um, Java 1.8 that people were excited about. 
uh, what I displayed isn't exactly using it to its um, full potential, but you can obviously see that it can be applicable in several different scenarios. Uh, next time we'll be going over another big thing that was added with Java 8, which are streams, not like input-output streams like we're used to, but um, streams with arrays and collections. Trust me, it'll be a barrel full of monkeys. Until then, I'm Barala Born, and have a good day.